What's up guys, welcome back to Airbnb ABCs. Today we're gonna to talk about something that most people don't like to talk about. Usually we're talking about how much money that we're gonna make, how much wealth we're gonna build, maybe ditch the nine to five if that's a possibility before for you. But today we're gonna to talk about the three types of problematic guests that you're going to end up encountering in your Airbnb business. But before we get into that, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. That's, that's gonna give you videos for all the things that we're doing in our Airbnb business, the types of properties that we are buying, uh, how to manage these from a long distance away. And if you guys have been with us for a while, hit that like button down below. That really helps us out in the YouTube algorithm. But 90, 5% or so, and you know, any statistic is usually made up on the spot, and that's kind of where, what I'm doing with this, but like 95% of the guests that you're gonna get in your Airbnb properties are going to be great. They're gonna be awesome. They're there to have a good time. They're there to go on vacation, or they're you know there for remote work or something like that. They're going to just you know enjoy their time, go home, not cause you any problems. They're going to overlook any minor problems in your properties, such as like uh, you know like a light bulb is out or um, a smoke detector battery is chirping that you have to either tell them how to replace or get your cleaner on it. Not to say that you know these things are acceptable because you do want to be renting top tier properties, but things are going to happen with a building uh, with any type of property, just like they happen in your house or apartment or wherever that you live and. You know, it just happens, and there's really not a lot that you can do about it, and they'll overlook those things. They're gonna respect the place, uh, they're gonna leave it clean, they're not gonna bring in any unauthorized pets or anything else, and they're going to end up leaving you a great review at the end because you've given them a great experience, and even though there was a couple of these little minor, minor type of uh, irritations, everything went pretty well. The other 5% or so, the, uh, those people are going to give you some kind of problems and you know, I've dealt with these people, I've dealt with these people in long-term rentals and I've dealt with these people in short-term rentals. I'll tell you, I much prefer dealing with them in short-term rentals because they're gone quicker than they are in long-term rentals. And I've kind of broken these down into three different categories and they're kind of in, um, in order of you know increasing level of severity but also the the, the increasing level of uh, likely to happen to you and they come down to three things complaining pants and i did uh steal that that term from the uh, mr money mustache uh web blog uh, whatever uh, there is messy people and people that bring uh, pets and then there are the disasters slash scammer people and we're going to break down each one of these in detail how uh, you can deal with them and how to avoid ending up renting to these folks. The one that you're going to run into most often is your complainy pants guests and these are the people that are going to point out every single thing that is wrong with your property. Even if you have a brand new build, you just put brand new furniture furniture in it a building is never perfect it just isn't like it there's going to be something that is out of place that is wrong with all the different systems light bulbs batteries fasteners that hold things in even a brand new construction or something that you have just done a full renovation on is going to have something wrong with it somewhere and these are the ones where you're going to get pointed out that there's light bulbs out that there's like dust on an air vent um, that that you're going to get these things for just very minor stuff it's going to be something and it's all going Going to be very minor stuff you know in your opinion maybe to them it's a big deal but overall for the vast majority of people it's going to be a minor problem and you're going to end up getting a message from these people nearly every day you're going to wake up in the morning and be like what are they going to complain about today because they're going to find something all the time these are you know in the in the parlance of our time these are the karens of the world but the good news is that on the front end, these people typically reveal themselves very early on in the process. They're usually going to ask you a million questions that are very minor that almost anyone could do and almost anyone could figure out by either uh, you know just having a, a good idea of the property through your description that you take good care of the place that the reviews that you have gotten are nearly you know all five stars or, or your reviews your total aggregate is like 4.97 4.98 that so you know that you're going to have a very good property or things that could easily be figured out by googling like how far away is it from xyz where can they go to find a restaurant what kind of restaurants are around in, in stuff that is not necessarily your job to do. There might, occasionally a guest might ask you one of those, but when you end up getting a list after you get a booking or in an inquiry, 
I have like 10 different questions. Uh, these are usually um, warning signs that you are going to get a complainy pants guest. And the best thing that I can tell you guys to do is if you get it before the booking, give them the answers that they don't want to hear. And make it so that they actually don't want to book your place. Now, it might sound counterintuitive, but there is plenty of business out there, especially if you guys are following what I'm saying in, book, in uh, buying your properties in very high demand rental areas like Gatlinburg, Pigeon Forge, the, the Florida or Texas Gulf Coast, you know, places that are big time time vacation rental areas, you're not going to have a problem uh, finding another guest for those dates. So give them the answers that they don't want to hear because you don't want to deal with them once they get into your property and have uh, the ability to pick it apart and possibly leave a bad review. If one does happen to slip through the cracks, uh, before they get there, before you know they start their stay and are able to leave a review, they start asking you all these questions, just rapid firing this stuff. And even if you know it sounds like uh, they might have problems with the property, just tell them straight up, listen, this property doesn't sound like it's, uh, it's going to be a good fit for you. You can go ahead and cancel. We're gonna give you a full refund and you can find a property that is more suited for what you want. The biggest thing is try to get these people to not stay at your property. That, that's the, that's going to save you a lot of headache. And if you have a premier property and a premier vacation area, like I've been, you know, talking about time and time again on this channel, you're not going to have a property filling those dates. But sometimes they slip through, and sometimes uh, you get a person that just you thought was not a complaining pants. They get there, all of a sudden your phone is lighting up with message after message after message of all the things that are wrong with your place. The first thing that you're going to want to do is just acknowledge their concerns initially. Uh, a lot of people just they love reporting crap. They love reporting stuff to management. I don't know what it is, but they, they, like, they like being in contact with you and like telling you all the stuff. If they do have real issues, if there's real problems with the cabin, if the hot tub doesn't work, if the dishwasher is leaking all over the place, if something that is a major amenity just simply doesn't work, you need to work with them to try to fix that problem, fix that real problem. Get your handy people, get appliance repair people, get hot tub repair people out there. Make sure that you have their written consent to enter the place uh, in the platform message so that there's no, you know, I didn't say, I said, he said, she said type of stuff. Fix that crap because that is uh, what needs to be done immediately. And the minor stuff, like a light bulb is out, there's a, a, a battery in a remote's not working, whatever, thank them for bringing that to your attention. You know, it, it kind of gives them some positive feedback that what they did was good, even though that's not what we want to do, but you're not having these people long enough to, to create a long-term rapport with them or whatever. So just say, you know, thank you for bringing this to my attention. We will have somebody on it later and we apologize for the inconvenience that, that you have caused. Remember guys, that these things, uh, that these complaining pants, these minor things, they are going to be annoying. They're going to stress you out. Uh, but remember that they're going to be gone soon. You could have this person in a long-term rental. Someone may, and, and they could be dealing with this all the time. You're going to be dealing with this person for probably somewhere between two to seven to maybe uh, 14 days, and then they are gone. So keep in mind the big picture is that this is a short-term rental, so you have short-term problems with these people. If this, this stuff goes on and on and on, you may have to just end up uh, kind of pulling back giving them more space, not responding to them immediately, not giving them that instant gratification that continues this cycle of reporting more and more things. Or you may have to just go ahead and ghost them and just say, it's not worth my time. Things aren't getting better. I'm not gonna get a review out of this, so I'm not gonna spend any more of my mental energy. You know that your place is awesome. They're picking it apart for, for reasons that are just ridiculous. And just you may have to just stop responding to them. Uh, that sounds like uh, kind of a drastic thing to do, but it may be just what you need to do uh, to get you, you know, to be mentally sane and because you know you're never going to fix their problem. The next one up, and it's less frequent than the complaining pants by a long shot, is the person that, uh, the guest that leaves, uh, they leave a big mess or they leave it messier than what you would uh, expect, or they bring like a pet to a non-pet uh, cabin, property, beach house, whatever, or they break something that's not necessarily a lot of money. I mean, even like a TV these days, they break a TV, we're talking about a couple hundred bucks. It's not that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things. Again, you guys, I'll repeat this over and over. Big picture here. You focus on small things sometimes, you need to step back and consider the big picture. In general, with most things, especially under $500 of damages of cleaning, we are going to clean the place, repair the stuff, and move on. 
I hear lots of people on the internet because I'm active in a lot of owners forums and uh, investors forums. They want to make an example of people. And they say, well, it's not right. They want to talk about what's right and the state of the world and people are getting away with whatever they want and all this crap. And you know, they may be, they may actually be right. But what, uh, what is right and what is, is two different things. Because we are in this as a business. This is not personal between the, us and the guests. And we want to get a good review. So if you have someone that comes in, leaves a mess, brings a pet in, and you have to pay $50 or 100 more dollars to your cleaner, or if you have, you have to pay $50 to your cleaner and you have to replace a $200 TV, you may feel like you want to recoup that cost by getting that from the guests. And the thing is, is that they may they may pay it. They may pay you the 250. Uh, a lot of times they're not, they're gonna deny it. And then you can take it to the resolution center, either the Airbnb or VRBO or whatever. And you may end up getting that money. And they may leave you a retaliatory one-star review that you aren't able to have taken off of that, uh, off of your, um, your, your platform because it doesn't necessarily have any provable falsehoods. Like they said it was a, a, a three bedroom and it's actually a two bedroom. That's, you know, that's a provable falsehood. But if they say, this is our experience, it was awful or whatever, they're not gonna remove that. So that $50 or 150 or 250 that you may recoup could cost you thousands if that, that retaliatory re review drops you down either out of super host status so you don't get as, as high of search rankings or if other guests come along and they see, see that your place is rated a 3.5 star place instead of a 4.97 or a 4.89 or something like that, that's gonna end up costing you thousands because you wanted to make an example of somebody and they end, they're going to end up hurting you more on the back end. Think big picture, guys. $500 is where we start to think about uh, considering recouping costs, but again, we always have to consider what the repercussions might be. So what you wanna do with this is you wanna get ahead of this, and you wanna get ahead of all the problems. Is When problems come along, you wanna get ahead of them in your next guess. But I put the house rules in every interaction with the guests from inquiry to booking confirmation to check-in instructions. The house rules and the checkout instructions are in every one of those so that there is no way that people can't say that I didn't see this or whatever. I put a no pets, no smoking, uh, image right in the middle of our picture roll right in the like after we've gone through like the main living areas the first bedroom no pets no smoking because most people are going to first click on your profile picture or your uh, your um uh, thumbnail picture of the property which is very important to have a very good thumbnail picture by the way then they're going to scroll through the picture roll to see if they like the place that's going to say that and then they're going to go to the description and read what it has people are visual they're sc scrolling through these very quickly so get that in their heads immediately as fast as you can have some sort of fine in the house rules for bringing a pet uh, because there is usually extra cleaning fees with that i say that we have a 300 dollars uh fine if you bring a pet it is a it is a threat. It's a deterrent. I've never tried to collect on that again because I don't want to get a retaliatory review because at three hundred dollars that I might collect maybe is going to cost me probably thousands in a bad reta retaliatory review. Now, last up in the least common occurrence, but the one that's going to give you the most headache is the disaster guest. Now, this may start out as a complaining pants type of guest, but there's basically two types of disaster guests. There is the, the, the complaining pants that you're never going to uh, appease, and then there is like the severe damage, uh, you know, things have not gone well after a stay type of guest. The first one, the complaining pants, these are your like ultra complaining pants guests and everything is terrible. You can't fix it no matter what. It's just, it's just not going to work out with them. They might have even made things up. They might have even brought in stuff uh, to make your place look bad. They might have brought in a stained sheet. They might have put uh, debris or, or 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 you know food scraps on the on the floor on the table. They might bring in a bed bug in a in a, in a Ziploc bag. You can order them off the internet, by the way, from like uh, biological supply places. Um, and so you're never going to appease this person. They might be a scammer where they're trying to get a free stay out of you or a severely discounted stay out of you, and they might uh, you know try to take that up with the platforms to try to get them against you to get that free stay. There's not a lot of ways that you're going to be able to handle this other than just tell them if you leave within one hour because you hate this place, it doesn't work out for you. It's disgusting. There's everything is broken, you know, and, and we, you know, say, okay, we'll believe you on that. If you leave with one, within one hour, 
you can get it will give you a full refund the way that this works is that it puts the ball in their court they're saying it's terrible we can't stay here whatever so you say you know what we'll give you all of your money back you don't have to stay here we're not going to try to force you uh and they can you know exit this short-term rental hell that they've gotten themselves into and get all their money back that way, you know, you don't have to deal with the crazy. Yes, you are going to lose out on some revenue. Uh, yes, uh, you're probably not going to get it rebooked. Um, and yes, they can still leave a review. But you get them out. You don't have to deal with them for the next, you know, 2 to 14 days. And you, and you can move on with your short-term rental life. If they do leave and you don't want to get a review from them because again, they can still leave a bad retaliatory review. Uh, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is if you have automatic review requests, you're gonna to wanna to turn that off for this guest. You're gonna to wanna to delete that review request. Now, Airbnb and VRBO are still probably gonna ask, how was your stay, whatever. If they write a false review, if these things did not happen, if there is materially false stuff in there, get on the phone, on the phone with these uh, companies challenge this fake review if you don't get the answer that you want the first time continue to call back and call back and call back and call back time and time again until you get the answer you want or you just feel like you have exhausted all of your options a lot of times you can get these reviews removed uh, sometimes you can't it's frustrating it's not exactly fair but you know as they say life isn't fair and you just got to move on sometimes sometimes you may just have to delete that listing and relist it it's not a great situation, but this is not something that happens a lot. If you get the, the other type, the severe damage guests after um, either during a stay or after a stay, if, if you rent a two bedroom cabin, they have 20 people in there throwing a party. You may find that out during the stay. If that is the case, you're gonna to wanna to call the police. You're going to want to call your cleaners or a handyman or someone that represents you as a local agent. That's the way most uh, jurisdictions do this. You can kick them out. You can say that they're gone. They are not tenants, they are guests. They do, they do not have tenant rights under the law, such as evictions or something like that. You can have the, the police or the sheriff or whatever throw them out of your place and then you you call the platform as you're calling the police as well and your cleaners let them know about the situation the platforms are not tolerating uh, house parties any longer so they will uh, you know likely side with you likely not let them leave a review and you will likely uh, probably keep all your money plus whatever damage that they do if it's after a stay you're gonna to need to assess the damage uh, you're going to have to file claims with the platform you're gonna to have to file claims with your insurance the biggest thing to do in this case before you know you need to calm down start documenting everything have your your handyman have your cleaners go in there start taking pictures more importantly than taking pictures is taking video because you could probably they could say that you could create a picture if you end up having to go to court for something they might say that you uh have to take a a, a picture uh but uh, a video is a very uh, a very clear um, you know thing that, that they can say is not made up. You, it's very hard to fabricate. So always take a, a video if you can. Document the crap out of it. it you may be consider suing these people. Always weigh the cost of your time and money versus what you're going to recoup. If it takes you, you know, five thousand to repair the property, but you end up being out of pocket five thousand in attorney's fees, five thousand in uh, you know, court fees. Uh, your time and effort, you know, you may have to take off work. Always consider that versus, you know, what it costs to just get the place up and running and get on with it. I know that you're probably pissed. I know you want to make an example of these people. You may want to hold their feet to the fire, but they may not have anything for you to collect on. And, you know, they probably don't even care anyway. Always remember the big picture. Don't get stuck in the, the small issues on the day to day, uh, you know, that aren't going to make a hill of beans in a year, in five years, in 10 years and just you know, keep the big picture in sight. Guys, I want you to click on the videos on the screen. Uh, I want you to click on this video that's going to tell you how to get the best guests into your Airbnb properties, into your VRBOs, your short-term rentals, so you don't end up having to deal with any of these three types of terrible guests that are gonna make your life a living hell for the time that they are there and potentially right after they uh, have left. I appreciate you guys watching today. If you haven't subscribed yet, down below, hit that subscribe button. A lot of good stuff gonna be coming out on short-term rentals. Hit the like button for me. That really helps me out in the YouTube algorithm. I appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you in the next.